the Prime Minister under pressure this morning to make clear exactly what she thinks about the idea of a wealth tax. In 2020, Jacinda Ardern ruled it out. Would you resign before you put in a wealth tax? I won't allow it to happen as Prime Minister. Revenue Minister David Parker told me on Friday they want more information about the wealthy but rule nothing out. I know there's many, many ways to have a fairer tax system and it's not tax, and guts, tax cuts for the wealthier. You know, at the moment, How else do you do it, though, without a capital gains tax? Well, there's lots of different ways you, you could like what? change. Uh, well, um, you could have capital gains taxes, you could have stamp duties, you could have wealth taxes, you could have deemed income taxes. We're not proposing any of those. No. I put the question of a wealth tax to the Prime Minister on this show yesterday morning. We haven't prepared our tax policy for the next election yet. But you've ruled out a capital gains tax while you're leader. Yes, that I stands. Have. Yes, yes. But you're not ruling out the potential for a wealth tax, the potential for a we stamp duty. We have not worked on our tax policy for 2023. Mm, getting tricky, isn't it? That response triggered a wave of political and public reaction, forcing her to say this by the end of the day yesterday. We're not doing any additional work, and I stand by all the statements I've made today. I've made a number of statements in this space, and I stand by all of them, and nothing has changed. Making that is nothing on our tax policy yeah. has changed. Uh, ten minutes after seven now, let's go to Green MP Chloe Swarbrick and Act Leader David Seymour, who are with us from Wellington this morning. Good morning. Morena. Good morning. Is this clear to you, Chloe? Clear to me what the position is. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm really clear on what the Green Party's position is. We campaigned on a wealth tax in 2020. Yeah, you did. Um, David, you clear on what the, what the Labour Party's position is on this? You know what I think she's doing? She's doing the old trick John Key used to use, saying that as Prime Minister, the government is not doing any work, but as the Labour leader, she's getting ready to campaign on it. Um, sorry, Chloe, you're going to have some competition. Uh, you'll have two parties trying to put a wealth tax on New Zealanders at the election. Yeah. And that's only fair. That's what elections and campaign debates are precisely for, for New Zealanders to totally. their minds up. Totally, totally. This is what you want, Chloe, right? This is what the, the Greens have wanted for a long time. Why not? Because you're likely to have a lot of power at the next election. It's, not, it's going to be no 2020. Um, why not make it a, a bottom line for the Green Party to, get, to make sure it's there? I think like every political party, as the Prime Minister has just alluded to, and I'm sure you couldn't get David to commit to exactly what his policies or bottom lines are going to be, negotiating the next <laughs> government. Uh, but what I can say uh, is that we do know that there is an immense distortion with regard to the distribution of wealth in this country. The top 10% uh, own 70% of the wealth. The top 1% own a quarter. The least wealthy half of New Zealanders, that's 2.5 million New Zealanders, own just 2% of the wealth. That's not an accident. That is the consequence of political decisions that have been made for the past few decades. This is a true fact that Chloe is telling us right now, David. Do you have a problem with that huge concentration of wealth in the hands of a few? No, I have a problem with poverty. I have a problem with people lacking opportunity. Uh, but Where does that come from? Mm. That comes from mm. that inequality. No, it comes from having a, an education system that's not engaging kids. Uh, it comes from having an infrastructure funding regime that makes it hard to get enough homes built. Uh, and it comes from a lack of investment and innovation that creates high-paying, interesting jobs that are globally connected. Uh, the problem I have with this whole wealth tax shtick is that you listen to Chloe and the problem for her is that some people are wealthy. The problem for me is how do we create the opportunity for everybody to become wealthy? And if our only idea, and if the government's only idea is how do we divide up the wealth that's already in New Zealand, uh, then we're not facing the real problem. And I'll give you an example. People say you want to put a capital gains tax on housing. Well, the real problem is there's not enough houses for the number of people. And supply and demand, the price keeps going up. It doesn't help a young first home buyer uh, to know that the person selling the house is paying more tax if the price keeps going up. So we've got to solve the real problems of supply and opportunity if we want a better country, uh, yeah, the rather problem, than David, this tall poppy syndrome approach. The problem with that theory is that it hasn't worked, has it? I mean, how long, how long have you been saying that? How long has that party been saying that? And well, actually, the party was the instigators of it in the 1980s. Things, things at the bottom haven't gotten any better. But, Chloe, equally, mm. with the... Well, well no, hang on, hang on, hang on, right. If you're going to say that, give me a chance to respond. 
actually it, it has worked. If you look at people's income, it has stayed equal over the last 80 years, unless you count housing costs. So we have a major problem uh, with housing, but that's because we're not building enough houses. It's not because our tax system's wrong. And in fact, we have the highest rates of inequality that we have ever had in this country since records began. And that is a consequence of the uh, policies of a, that we're of a broken, of of a broken housing market. Forbear. Just actually to speak to policies at present, if you look at the ACT proposal, uh, the ACT Party's proposal rather, if you are a minimum wage earner in this country, you will get precisely zero. Your boss, well, they might get a bit. And your boss's boss, particularly if they're earning over 180000 well, they might get <laughs> quite a bit. And that money they may choose to put into an asset like housing, which is a renter you will help to pay off All right. with uh, them getting no uh, capital gains yeah, uh, I, tax I, on we that. We always get to the David, stage where Chloe gives up on her policies and tries to explain mine. <laughs> oh, well, David, but before we do that, before we start to explain clear. each other's policies, because that's going to get very confusing for people, um, I want to talk about the stick to the to the wealth tax. And Chloe, one of the problems that you've got is that the experts say a wealth tax isn't actually the smartest way to go about doing what you want to do. And the thing is, you both agree that there's a wealth inequality problem in New Zealand. You both agree on that. That, that point. But is a wealth no, tax... No, we don't. There, there's an opportunity problem. OK, whatever you want to label it, you're both looking at the same um, turd on the ground. So, what, so <laughs> the, the question is, how do you... Um, and I don't, mean the, the, I don't mean the poor, by the way, in case that was the impression I gave. Um, how do you fix that problem? And, Chloe, the wealth tax idea... If you listen to Professor Craig Elliff, um, who you know, specialises in taxation law, he was on the tax working group, he says it's not actually a practical way to go about doing that. There's only four countries in the world who have them. It makes wealthy people and their capital leave the country in some cases. Um, there is no income that you are actually taxing. It's just wealth itself. So you have a liquidity problem as well. Is this the right way to go about it? Well, again, I think that it comes down to which economist or expert you're listening to because the foremost expert on inequality, or one of the foremost experts of inequality in this country, Max Rashbrook, who's working out of Victoria University of Wellington, is one of the many proponents of a wealth tax. How do you deal with that, though? If you're in a house, and they're worth a lot now, aren't they? I think yours was 1% at 1%. Uh, million net assets, 2% at 2 million net assets. 1% above, yeah. So yeah. just if I can explain that, Ryan. So, yeah, but, but uh, just, before on... you, just before you do, let's give you an example. If you're a um, you know, retiree, you're on a fixed income, you don't have a lot of cash, but you've got a house that's worth a lot of money that you're still living in, how do you service that, that tax? So, yeah, let's really drill into the detail here because I think that it's important that it's not misrepresented. So, again, based on the data that we had available in 2020, this would apply to the top 6% wealthiest New Zealanders in this country. So, to give you a really concrete example, okay. if, pick on you are a two, if you have $2.5 million worth of assets, net assets, that is without mortgages, without any debt as a couple... Congratulations. Firstly, you're in the top 6% in the country. Uh, but secondly, that would apply to you as an individual. So if you take it as an individual, that's $1.25 million worth, uh, of net worth. And then that only applies to that $250,000. 1% of that is $2,500. For that $2,500 contributed to the tax pool in this country, we can eradicate poverty. David? Well, I think if government spending was going to eradicate poverty in and of itself, um, we would have done that by now. Uh, the truth is that we're talking again about tall poppy syndrome in the tax code. How do we divide up the wealth that exists and, and put real pressure on retirees? I had this debate with Julianne Genta, one of Chloe's colleagues, uh, a few years ago, and she just said to people in the room, uh, you could get a reverse mortgage to pay our wealth tax, and you could hear the intake of breath and the oxygen sucked out of the room. I mean, that's the reality. It's unimaginative. It's not about how do we create more wealth, how do we become a wealthier country with more opportunity for young New Zealanders. It's about how do we take what is already there. That kind of short-term thinking gives no future to New Zealand, but it will mean that young New Zealanders seek a future elsewhere. This David is the guy who opposes minimum wage increases. Chloe, Chloe, we've got to leave it there, I'm afraid. Um, thank you both so much for coming on the show. Good to see you. Chloe Swarbrick from the Greens and David Seymour from the ACT Party with us from Wellington this morning.